Raising Cane's founder, Todd Graves, is interviewing game changers to find their secrets of success. I was just trying to do something that I love and be there for my child. Secret Sauce with Todd Graves. New episodes Saturdays at 1 on A&E. Well, here in Dallas, anyway, for North Dallas, for over two decades, we have been enjoying Eatsy's Market and Grill, and they've changed hands a couple of times, but back with the original ownership now, and beginning to grow. Actually, Eatsy's kind of grows like glaciers move, but there's beginning to be some movement. Adam Romo is the CEO of Eatsy's and has been for over a decade. It's good to have you with us. It's good to be here, David. Good to, good to catch up with you again. Well, and we haven't talked since COVID, and, and it was probably a good thing to be not be out over your skis with expansion plans, you know, when, when COVID hit. But uh, let me let me ask you about that. In fact, I mean, it occurs to me that Eatsy should be should have been well positioned to make it through something like COVID. Everybody wanted takeout food. Yes, you're right. And we we would have thought that, too, from the very beginning. But the shelter in place and the impact psychologically uh, on on everybody was pretty significant. Um, you know, our, we were rolling along. Business was great. You know, we're always looking to keep the concept fresh and current. And then when COVID hit, it it we tanked like everybody else. Our customer counts dropped 75 percent. Wow. Because, you know, there was just a lot of fear, you know, the unknown and, you know, what really happens when you catch COVID. And it, it was it was, in, you know, it, it affected us like it did everybody else. And the first three months were, were pretty uh, nerve wracking for us in terms of the business and the viability and just, you know, the uncertainty with all that. Well, but, and that was true with everybody. I think you were just afraid to go out. I would guess they would be afraid to eat food prepared by somebody else because we didn't know how contagious it was. Um, but coming out of that, I, I would think business should have been pretty good. Yeah. And let me let me kind of walk you through that, because uh, before COVID hit, you know, we like I said, we were we were, you know, racing along. Business was great. Um, the one and we're always looking at ways of, of, you know, bringing more convenience to the to the customer. One thing we had never done is we'd never utilized e-commerce and air, all the restaurants were doing, you know, uh, pick up and delivery. Now, because our concept was designed for to go fast, convenient to go service, right. we just never felt a need to do that. And quite honestly, our customers weren't asking for it. But as we as we're always looking to improve and give the customer something, even if they don't realize they need it or want it, you know, we we decided to launch e-commerce. Now, one thing we realized in analyzing that that whole environment is our menu and the size of our menu and the complexity doesn't lend itself to using these uh, DSPs, these delivery service providers, and their e-commerce application. So to try to to try to put our menu with all the variability and the customization, it just it just wouldn't work. It would not be a good experience for our customer, and that's something I wasn't willing to do. So what we did is we went out and hired our own development firm, technology company, and we developed our own site from scratch. Wow. We yes, it was quite an undertaking, <laughs> and but you know at the end of the day, it was the it was the right decision. Now now the negative is it takes time because you're writing yeah. they're developing the code from scratch. But we laid out how we wanted our site to look, um, you know, the functionality we wanted. Uh, we weren't trying to build Rome in one day because you'd have never gotten the thing launched, right? So we said, let's start with a basic site, and then we'll add features and functionality uh, along the way. Um, so we were set. We started that initiative in 2019. We were, we were planning to launch the site in late 2020. Well, of course, we know what happened in early 2020. Right. So... Because we were developing this thing from scratch, there was no way to really rush that out. So we pivoted and said, let's do a real crude version of what we have right now, just to get at least some pickup and curbside options for our customers. And we launched that in about six weeks. So, you know, it wasn't, there were no bells and whistles. It wasn't pretty looking. The pictures weren't great, but it worked. <laughs> and, and that's all really anybody cared about, I think, was. Yes, that giving, is true. Giving somebody yeah. to put on. Well, now it looks like you guys, you know, technology wise are going the opposite way because I talked. I was kidding about your expansion, but I, everybody's excited about you showing up at DFW Airport over in that little extension out, out from Terminal D. And I guess right. that's later on this year. But you've got this Amazon 
technology in there that, that we've been reading about, the just walkout technology, where I guess you check in and you pick up what you want and you just you leave. It, it's Yes, it's the same technology that Amazon uses in their just walkout store. So basically, there's cameras, you know, all throughout the ceiling and sensors and all the shelving. And it's it's really complicated, but they've actually got it down and they're licensing that technology. So, we're, you know, when a customer. OK, so what they do is before they enter the store, they have to either swipe a credit card or uh, if they're already a member of Amazon, just walk out. They just enter their uh, or swipe their card. So they they come in. And so now the uh, the payment processing is is really taken care of. So you shop the store, you pick something up, it goes into your virtual cart. If you decide to put it back, they t- t- it comes it gets removed from your virtual cart. And then when you're finished shopping, you literally, like it says, you just walk out and it and it uh, it hits your credit card with the transaction charges. God, that's perfect for an airport. I mean, it seems like it would be made for an airport. Is anybody yeah, else um, doing this? Yes, there's some there's some uh, vendors uh, using that that are licensing this technology at both uh, DFW and Love Field, and I'm certain at other airports as well. And it really lends itself to that environment, as you know, because everybody's in a hus- is hustling to get to their flight, get something to eat. And, you know, they're, it, it's everything about speed in an airport. Yeah. And so, you know, we're, we're going to do that and we'll, uh, we're going to actually start testing. The equipment will come in um, in June, July. We'll test it, get it implemented. And then we're set to open, um, planning to open in August of this year, 2023. Well, so you've got a half a dozen stores of memory serves that are all sort of in neighborhood locations where everybody can drop by and pick up something or do some shopping. This is just a lot different, a different direction. Are, it is. Is this the first of what you hope is going to be many? I think it will be, actually. And, and, and to tell you the truth, we've been pursued by the airports for a number of years. Uh, but, you know, back in 2017, as you remember, we opened two stores in one year, Preston Royal and um, Fort Worth. So we were busy, focused on that. We really weren't interested in airport development at that point. We knew at some at some time when it made sense, that would be another uh, channel of distribution for us. You know, like I said earlier, e-commerce was one we weren't in. We got that now um, as another channel of distribution, uh, along with delivery as well. And uh, so the airport, um, we went ahead and as we went through it with them, like I said, we were planning to open that in late 2020 when uh, we first ta- started talking with DFW. But when COVID hit, all the air, all uh, concessions and development, you know, new new terminals was were put on hold. Absolutely. So from 2020, now here we are, what, three years later, and we're finally going to get this thing open. But um, no, we we are looking at, and talking about more more terminals, more airports, and because our concept is ideal for an airport location, I mean, I you, you know you can imagine these in just about any airport around the country. Yeah, but I could see how this could also help your brand. I mean, obviously you want to make money out of this, but you've got so many people flowing through an airport. I mean, most of the people that come in at, into DFW and turn around going someplace else. And so they probably live someplace else. So it ought to help the, the recognition of your brand if you want to put in more bricks and mortar stores in, in other cities. You're exactly right. And that's actually part of the longer play uh, with our strategy. Um, and as you recall, back in way back when, you know, we had locations in Washington, D.C., um, Atlanta, Atlanta yeah. New York Houston, City, New York City, I and New York City. And we get I can't tell you how many emails social media requests, come back to Atlanta, come back to Houston, come back to D.C. So we've got great brand recognition there already. So this would dovetail really nicely from a branding standpoint um, because we've been there and operated and we have, you know, great uh, credibility there. Well, have you got hard expansion plans beyond beyond DFW, other cities that you're talking about going into? Not right now. Right now we're looking at, you know, we we're – you know, we're taking a much different approach with expansion than we did back in the day. You know, when we launched in 96, it's very measured uh, growth. It's very strategic. It's not taking chances with sites. And so, um, you know, one day, yes, that will that will happen. But right now, because we can do uh, DFW, we can open in Love Field. We can open at multiple terminals at the at DFW. You know, we weren't we're going to go ahead and 
prove that out. It's easier execution, of course, because it's local. And then we just really kind of start spreading out from there. To me, the next logical physical uh, or physical location would be Houston. You know, we've been there now. We had a great location there and right. uh, kind of their uptown area, uh, Post Oak and San Felipe near the Galleria. So, you know, you can in Houston with the density and population there, we can open twice as many ETSs. So there's really no reason or need to spread out across the country yet. You know, take take the easy execution, the low risk execution expansion today. Well, it's so, going gonna, gonna to be fun to see. I, I can't I, I really look forward to seeing this in operation at DFW. So you think you'll be open by, say, the fall? Yes. Yes, that's the plan. Assuming all things, you know, we don't run into any obstacles. I'll tell you something else that's interesting, David, about this. We are going to have a full service bar as part of this, con- as part of the Eatsies there. Now, as you know, we have beer and wine. We've never served spirits, but, you know, Ken, again, you, you, you listen to the experts, uh, the subject matter experts, and DFW said the majority of alcohol sales in the airport is, is cocktails. So, you know, they said, we really would like you to consider, said, done, <laughs> done. <laughs> My favorite cocktail is the green cocktail. <laughs> you're going to have, you're going to have people missing their flights and laying over on, on purpose. Uh, yeah. And so, on. you know, the, the archi- you know, looking at the architecture too, it, it looks just like, I and mean, it's going to look like you're going to recognize all the art branding elements of an and you're going to have this really cool bar attached to it. But it's going to be facing out to the common area of the terminal because we're going to have seating right across the walkway, and it's 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 going to be a great location for us, um, you know. And again, all the the, the technology for for speed uh, speed of service, yeah. and of course our great food. It's 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 going to be. We're really excited about it. Very excited as well. You should be. It's going to be a lot of fun to see. Adam Romo is the CEO of Eatsy's Market and Grill, and it's been entirely too long since we've caught up. It won't be this long next time. Good to see you. Thanks. Great, David. Great talking to you. Thanks a lot. For more of a conversation, go to krld.com slash CEO. I'm David Johnson, News Radio 1080 KRLD.